Sunny, I'm a GIS developer working at NASA's JPO, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, for around like three years. Um, today, I, I want to demo the soft a web application I made called GIS. It's a web-based GISQ, web-based GIS application. Started as a, like a personal idea, and then I brought it to the JPL a year ago to get more support and community around that to to build it. Um, I'm not re really interested in showing slides, so I have like five, six slides, and then I g demo the application. So GIS in past is is not to is wasn't very free like ArcGIS and other software is like. You have to pay for that, and also it's usually um, they are like a desktop version. Still, there are some most of them are desktop version. You have to download them and install it on your on your machine, and most of them are like platform independent. So you have to either use Windows or you have to download other versions. Every version for like Mac, Windows, um, Linux separately. Also, you have to always install a bunch of dependencies to be able to use your GIS application. And they are not very user friendly and kind of hard to install. I remember the first time I wanted to get the metadata or like a projection of a shape file in ArcGIS, I had to right click, go to properties, go to the like a tab for a special reference, and then see what the projection of the shape file is. So it wasn't very user friendly for me to work with the ArcGIS, although I worked with ArcGIS for two, three years, and then I stopped using that. I stopped, started using QGIS. And after that, I thought if I write my Python examples using GDAL, it's going to be easier for me to write simple code for every task I want to do. And then I ended up having like bunch of Python programs that does all this GIS processing. So I thought maybe I could share those in my GitHub page. So I made it a repository called Geoton. It's in the GitHub that has the, all the examples do um, pro reprojection conversion between different format, raster, vector, all of these. And every day, as, as, as soon as I write a program, I just keep adding to my repository for the, for the people to use that. So the Geoton is just a cookbook example of using GDAL, Python, um, NetCDF, HDF library. And, I, and then I thought maybe I could make a website on top of these Python code that people could do the visualization, metadata extraction, and also processing on the browser, not being, not needing to, needing to install any software on your computer. So GIS Cube is web-based application. It's open source. It's very easy to install. You just need to in install the Vagrant and Virtual Box. Then you do Vagrant up. You have the, you have the GIS Cube on your, or server or your um, personal computer. Then it's very easy to use is website. It's, I, I'm sure like surfing the website is much easier than surfing in the like a, a complicated application with bunch of buttons around the around the. And then it's good for like group work because it's a website you could running internally on your on your company, so you could log in and upload your shape file, do the processing, and it's because it's a website. If anybody else in your team log in in the website could see your file and then could continue the processing or visualize. So these are the like benefits you get from the GIS cube. The steps you want to go, you just simply load your file. Then you get the metadata of the file you loaded. Then you could visualize the data. And the most important, you could use the tools to do the GIS, GIS special processing. Right now, for loading a file, I support the um, shapefile, GeoJSON, KML, GeoTIFF, HDF, NetCF, ASCII, text file, and CSV file as both vector, raster, and point, point cloud, the point data. Also, I support OpenDAP to, OpenDAP is a, like a data provider for most of the NASA data that you could, um, you could put your data as a, I think, HDF and NetCDF format, and you could download those by, by having a URL. So you could call the URL and you get the data in a different format you want. You could also load your data from the OpenDAP to the GIS cube. Then accessing the metadata is just, you could see the metadata of the shapefile, GeoTIFF, um, NetCDF, HDF, as well as OpenDAP returns the attribute information about the data. Before you want to retrieve your data from the OpenDAP, you could see the, um, 
you could see that the data you want, the variable you want, the, the temporal resolution or boundary or spatial boundary you want. You could see the attribute and then download the data. Um, visualization. So the GIS cube is not meant to be perfectly on the visualization and creating map, but I put there because I need like I know like m many user wants to visualize the data before do the processing, or even after processing they want to check the data, visualize it on the map. So I use the open layer tree. Um, you could visualize shapefile. I'm still working on the KML. You could visualize GeoJSON. You could visualize your GeoTIFF. So when you upload your GeoTIFF to the GIS cube. On the fly, I create a tile using the GDAL to tile. So you could visualize your GeoTIFF on the open layer tree as well. <laughs> I'm working on the um, plotting the net CDF and HDF using Matplotlib. Matplotlib is a MATLAB Python open source library that you could make a plot using um, using Matplotlib. You, you, you can make a plot, uh, plot from the net CDF and HDF files. And tool section, I categorize tools based on the, the data format, like vector, raster, and netcdf, hdf. Um, you could do conversion, spatial analysis, or you could do um, extraction. You could extract some part of the like shapefile, create another shapefile, or extract the attribute table from the shapefile, save it as a text file. You could do a bunch of this processing. And every day when I write the code, I just it takes me like 10 minutes to add to add this code as a, like a new tool to the GIS cube. It's very easy to use because I always provide like a steps, like one, two, three, four, five. It's, it's simple for, it's, so GIS cube meant to be super simple and easy for the new GIS developer or user. So it tells you like what are the steps you have to follow to get the, get the results you want from the tools. The technologies as used, I use um, Django, is a Python web framework, is super powerful. I use GDAL OGR, um, NetCDF HDF Python library. I use the webification, is a is a, like an open DAB version that made in the JPL. You could put your um, NetCDF HDF. I think they are support GeoTIFF as well. You could put the, all of these fo fo um, formats in a one folder and you run the servers, then you could query specific time or bon special boundaries from the data through the browser. The coming feature is I want to com combine D3 with the open layer tree to be able to show the big data points on the D3, on the open layer tree also. Um, as I said, I'm gonna use the matplotlib to visualize the NetCDF and HDF and plot them. I want to use the raster here probably to do the more raster processing as a, like a, as a tools under the raster section. And then in the visualization right now, I, I don't have that much feature, but in future I want to put like a legend or title, then you could make your very simple map to be able to extract it as a, like a publish it for later. Um, you, could, you could check the repository, it's on GitHub, the GIS cube, and the Geoton is just a cookbook example of the um, geospatial examples. I'm using GDAL for that. Okay, I'm gonna go for the demo. So right now I'm using um, my local host running the, the server. As you can see, it's on the left side, it's um, just four simple buttons that you could move between all the all the tabs, all the features the GS Cube give you. The first page is the uh, data resources. You could upload your fo formats that supported here from your local. For example, I go and upload um, a net CDF from my local drive to the GIS Cube. All the for uploaded file you can see here. So I uploaded a shape file. I uploaded um, a GeoTIFF and I uploaded a NetCDF right now. You could also go to the OpenDAP link. You paste your OpenDAP URL, you give a name, and you could download either ASCII, NetCDF, NetCDF 3 or 4. And it's gonna be downloaded and put it in the upload section. So the first page, you put your data there. You could also delete, uh, uh, delete and remove um, and download them locally in your machine. 
then data information to get the to extract the metadata from the file you uploaded. So GIS Cube classifies data based on the, the format. So all the vector format comes here like a shape file. You, you get the metadata, what's the, what's the layer type, what's the projection, um, is the SV shape file, you get all these metadata of the vector files you added. In the raster, you get the same information. These are all comes from the GDAL, you read the, you read the formats. In HD, HDF and SDF, um, this is, I need to clean that. This is the JSON attribute table comes from the NetCDF header. And in the open tab also you could um, paste your URL here to get the metadata coming from the open tab server. Before you want to download your data, you could um, maybe the internet connection is not very good. So before you download your data, you could you could paste the URL of OpenDAP, get the attribute table back, pick your variable variable or data you want. Yes. Sorry. Edit the metadata. I don't think so, because this is, I think OpenDAP is like one way. You put your data there and then you grab. No, not for now. So the third section is data visualization. I, as I said, I use the open layer tree. Then the data also classified. So I uploaded a land boundary shapefile. I click it here, then I could see these three polygon reprojected to WGS84 on the fly to be able to visualize your shapefile on the open layer tree. So you see your shapefile here. Um, also the raster, if you remember in the first page, um, this is San Francisco web TIFF, is a geo TIFF I uploaded in the visualization. When I click on that, I have to basically, this is something I'm still working on, I have to zoom in to the place which is where, is the, where is the raster is located. And you see these are the tiles created from that geo TIFF, so you could visualize geo TIFF very easily on the open layer tree. Again, everything is happening on the browser, is, there is no software or anything. I'm still working on the net CDF and HDF visualization, as I said, to be able to plot them either using matplotlib or D3 and open layer tree. So the main section of the GIS cube is the tools. So these are the tools every day I'm keep adding to them. I classify the tools between, between the data formats, um, vector, raster, um, net CDF, based on the based on the class of them, you could do conversion, you could do like create something, extraction, a special analysis. For example, right now I want to convert the, the vector, the shapefile of boundaries to the raster, basically rasterizing a vector. So it's a shapefile to GeoTIFF. It has the steps, I said, select the, the current shapefile, then enter the layer name, which is the same. 4326 is the projection. The name I want is, I give a land tip or land raster. And then I would give the like a height and width, which is I give it like 200 pixel. What's the type? I give it like, these are like, if you remember, it's like when you want to call the GDAL rasterize, you have to give all of these parameters. So basically, this is the GUI on top of the GDAL rasterize. Instead of opening a terminal, writing all of those Python commands, you just do it on the browser. I give the values and then I say convert, it's done. So I close the tab, go back in the data resources. Um, the first file you see is a land, I forgot the D, is a land raster. So I just can't rasterize a shape file. If I go to the visualization tab, you could see the raster comes here. So you can see that all these, um, I could overfly the, I could put the layer on top of each other. You see the, I converted a, rast, a vector to the raster just in like 10 seconds in the browser. Then I could use a, like a buffering shapefile. You, you select your shapefile, you say I need like the range of 2.5, make a buffer, land buffer.
you generate the buffer, you close it, go it back to the data visualization, you see an, another shapefile is created. This is the actual shapefile, this is the buffer around that. If you want to download that, you go to data resources, land buffer, these are these four shapefile files, you just click on them and you download them. Again, this website, if it's running locally on, on your com company, then everybody could download these remove that or add their file. You could share the work together, finish something on as a team. Um, I could reproject the shapefile. You s select your shapefile. I think NAT83 was 4269. 4269. And you say land NAT83. You project down, you go to the data information. You have all the shape files you so far created. The actual one was 80, 84. I created the land, it is um, NAT 83. So you see that simple, you just reprojected your shape file. You want to install the GIS cube, you go to the GitHub page, make sure you start the project first, and then you go to the installation. Uh, I'm using Vagrant, it's very simple. You install Vagrant, you install VirtualBox, then you install the Vagrant zip file I put there, which has just um, the Vagrant file. So you do Vagrant up, and then you SSH, SSH to, the, to, the repo, to the machine, and you just run the Python, Python server. There is no need for installing anything. The Vagrant basically install all the dependencies I need for that, and also it Clones the latest repo from the from the GitHub, so you always have 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 the latest version of the GIS cube. If you have any Python code you want to contribute, either send it to me or send a pull request. It takes like five to ten minutes to add one of those buttons in the tool section that everybody else could use. That. That's it. Any any question? It kind of fast. <laughs> the server is on your computer, so when you do the when you install the Vagrant, it installs Ubuntu as a VM. You could install it on your server, or you could use it your your machine. Okay, everybody, thank you so much.